Today has really been a sort of down day in many respects. My body feels as though I've walked a thousand miles today. I hurt everywhere. And I went to my doctor and uh, he put me on morphine for my pain issues, so I hope that'll help. Then also today is the first and uh, after all the bills are paid, there's precious little left, which is pretty much usual. You know what, uh, you probably know what I mean. That gets very depressing. But if you enjoy fossil and artifact hunting, a day like today can be turned around. Today, while so much else was going on, I practiced a little urban archaeology, if you will, and made some wonder really wonderful finds. Um, ur urban fossil hunting is where I search through landscaping stone to see what I can find. And I have found many really rare specimens doing this. The specimens are, that I found today were not rare, but were nonetheless very interesting. The first one I'm showing you uh, caught my attention due to the cross shape that's on it. And I was surprised because less than a week ago I did a video about uh, uh, reminders in nature of Christ's amazing love for us and certainly the cross brought this to mind for me. And I saw it laying there, reached down, picked it up and examined it and I was perplexed at what, I could, at what it could be. The underside um, is dark brown, porous, with dark spots. Well, the five protruding nodules reminded me somewhat of um, maybe sea squirts, but I was sure it couldn't be that. Squirts are individual animals, and while these all look to uh, have been connected, um, all part of the same organism, if you will. Well, each of the five has a trace of a design in the center, with the cross being the most pronounced. I'd seen this before, but could not remember where. Do you know what uh, this fossil represents? The internet made quick uh, work of identifying this as a crinoid holdfast, and each of the five nodes was where a stem stretched out from the bottom. Crinoids are my, one of my two favorite uh, fossil uh, critters. They're tied with trilobites. But let me give you a little uh, crinoid background, if you don't mind. Crinoids are also called sea lilies because they look like plants. But they are animals. And they are econo er, excuse me, echinoderms, which means that they are related to the starfish, sea urchins, and brittle stars. And like other echinoderms, crinoids had tube feet, radial symmetry, a water vascular system and appendages that were in multiples of five. Most of the Paleozoic crinoids attached themselves to substrate on the ocean floor, which is what the purpose of the holdfast was. And by the way, there are hundreds and hundreds of species that survive today. Today I found another less dramatic crinoid stone fossil. It is uh, really unremarkable save for the fact that Rather than the cross in the center, it has a distinct uh, star-shaped pattern. Now the next fossil may not resemble what it really is, and that is a sponge. That is, uh, as near as I can tell, that's what it is, a sponge. It is a calcareous sponge. So what is that? It is uh, any class of sponge characterized by skeletons composed completely of calcium carbonate spicules, which are uh, sort of needle-like structures. While prolific in the uh, fossil record, the descendants still fill the oceans today. Calcareous sponges occur mainly on rocky bottoms of the continental shelves in temperate shallow waters, and they are usually a dull color. Most of these type sponge uh, fossils uh, there are small, seldom exceeding six inches. There is a wide variety of shapes to uh, add to your fossil collection. So keep your eyes open for them, because there are a lot of them out there. I've found quite a few in the past. But oftentimes, when I'm urban fossil hunting, I will run a, also run across interesting rock and mineral specimens. The piece I'm showing you now is pretty interesting. This rock resembles a small... Um, uh, meteor with a rough surface and miniature cr uh, craters in it. It is not a meteorite though. There's a rusty orange color and patches on the surface. I'm not sure what this is, but looks a lot like lichen. Uh, there is also a touch of green, which even more makes me feel that this is lichen, which is a living thing, a combination of algae and fungus in a symbiotic relationship that lives on stones and, 
and uh, other uh, other materials that have been laying outside for <clears throat> a very long time. <clears throat> a piece a piece is broken off, revealing more interesting characteristics. The outer cortex is a creamy white color, and the center dark gray to black, and resembling a chert type stone. This is uh, an igneous rock, which means that it was formed through processes of great heat and great pressure. Um, I'm going to be showing you um, now, probably without any commentary, a series of images that look rather bland um, and boring, but these are the places I commonly find these really special um, fossils, mineral, and rock specimens. So I hope you've enjoyed the program. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on a single new program here on the Dennis Morrison channel, and keep on watching as I show you these uh, further still photographs. God bless. Um.